Uh, first of all, Linux Australia respectfully acknowledges the Yigambe people and the traditional owners of the land in which we meet today. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging and all uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders peoples here today. Thank you all for joining us today at our first day of our flagship conference and thank you to Joel and um, Ben for doing an amazing job. Um, hopefully we can make this quick for you because I know we're standing between you and dinner and drinks. So. Um, I would like to move a motion that the minutes of the Linux Australia AGM for 2019 be approved. Can I have a seconder please? Andrew, all in favour? All against? Any abstentions? Three people, or oh, four people? Awesome, thank you. Now onto the reports. Um, I think we might ask for questions at the end of the three reports, if that's okay, just so we can speed things up for everyone. Uh, firstly, thank you to Kathy for the wonderful work on the annual report this year. It's stunning as always. And um, it feels like a bit like we're herding cats most of the time when we're trying to get the reports together but you've produced a wonderful document. Um, so I'm gonna take the annual report as read, um, but I'll give you a bit of a TLDR on the President's report. Um, it's been an interesting year to reflect um, on the year that we've had, and it's been a bit of an up and down year, and whilst I won't go into specifics, I'm quite proud of what we've managed to achieve this year. Um, we've increased our sponsorship on diversity sponsors and two, uh, for two key conferences, the Vala Tech Camp and the Net Thing uh, Governance Forum. Thank you specifically to Hugh Rundle, who's here, maybe, maybe not, um, from Vala, who gave us the opportunity to sponsor uh, someone from regional Queensland to actually attend the Vala Tech Camp and learn all things Android and Raspberry Pis. Um, and... Vala Tech Camp is really important to us because it's a very um, small tech camp that's very reminiscent of LCA. It's a very grassroots conference for librarians and anyone in the GLAM sector. And to be able to bring open source to that conference is quite important to us. Uh, we enjoy being part of it and we hope to be part of it in the future. Um, and Donna was there as well, which is quite cool. Um, the next thing, we'd like to thank uh, Sandra Davey uh, for organising the NetThing Internet Governance Forum. I don't know if anyone knows much about NetHui, which runs in New Zealand. Um, we're trying to bring back the Internet Governance Forum into Australia, especially during these rough times where the government's making decisions for us that they probably shouldn't be doing. Yeah. But, you know, we should be there to advocate uh, for our members and um, make sure we're there. Um, Australia sadly led the, led the way with governmental oversight into our activities online and we put a large amount of, un uh, which has created a large amount of uncertainty for us as open source developers and technologists in this industry. The assistance and access bill has caused havoc in this country and Linux Australia will do what we can to advocate for our members. We have partnered with organisations such as Internet Australia, Access Now, EFA and Digital Rights Watch to repeal this horrible bill. It's a big fight, that something that a volunteer council can't necessarily do ourselves. Which brings me to a crucial point. This council is 100% volunteer. Our conferences are 100% volunteer. We put hours upon hours into this organisation and our com uh, conferences. I can proudly say that our little organisation is one that others look to with envy. We have a stable and healthy organisation despite the free membership. We have a steady income stream from our conferences and we always give back to our community. We run these conferences for our community. We run this organisation for our community. We donate money for our community and we also provide funding for our community. Our precious time and effort is also for our community. Please be mindful of this. I would like to thank, um, oh, I'd like to think that we're all approachable, well, maybe except for Russell. Um, <laughs> but please, <laughs> but please do approach us if you do have an issue, because I think we actually do a pretty good job at responding to you, and please do come to us first if you do have a problem. Sometimes we forget that this is a volunteer effort, but let's not lose sight of that. 
I'd like to thank uh, my fellow council members. Uh, your support has meant a great deal to me, and I'm proud of the work that we have achieved. Thank you to Clinton and Josh, who have decided not to stand again this year. We will miss you and your opinions greatly. Um, and thank you to Jonathan, Russell, uh, Julian and Miles for re-nominating. It, it will be great to work with you again. I do appreciate the time that we've had to work all together and the, the wonderful perspective that you bring on things. Uh, thank you to the community for entrusting Linux Australia on us and here's to a successful 2020. Now I'll hand over to Julian, who will give his report. Yes, uh, if you haven't filled in attendance forms, they're up the front, please just make sure you do it before you leave. Uh, that is helpful for us to have a record. Um, so I'll leave most of this as it is on the printed form. We had a great collection of folk this year, not just on the council uh, contributions, Kathy in particular, but some of the other council ghosts over the year have had input, had assistance. Um, I mean, Josh obviously on the council, but regularly giving us context and history on some of the things as to why they are the silly way they are. Um, I know this is something that every council stands up and so says, but you don't see the amount of work that's in behind the scenes. Um, some of that is just because that's the work of running an organisation. Some of it is dealing with humans. Some of it is just the crazy you can't predict. Um, but the assistance we've had uh, from the former council, from some of our subcommittees that work, we work with the uh, Drupal... Subcommittee, steering committee. Steering committee. Um, the WordPress steering committee, and we're coming in and seeing the PyCon steering group also turning in is really helpful. It's um, in part giving these groups some of the autonomy they have very much wanted, um, but that also gives us space to uh, breathe and get some of the things done. Um, yeah, the probably the biggest thing of note is we have continued the work of migrating onto the new membership system, and obviously that was largely completed for last year's election, but some of the side effects of that were only seen this year with the membership renewal, um, where we did have a fairly massive loss of, um, loss of membership. And in part, that's probably an honest reflection of how many of our members on record were actually, member, were actually active members. Um, we previously had three, three and a half thousand <coughs> listed in member DB, and after renewal, we're down to about 600 now. Um, of course, unfortunately, the uh, fun we had with the various renewal emails having Incorrect links will not have helped with that, we know, as several of you have had issues with elections and needing accounts renewed. We hope those are resolved. Um, there's a couple of things we will be hopefully testing as we uh, do some more work on the website in the early part of this year, but um, thank you to those of you who've been at least letting us know when we've stuffed up and making things fixed. Um, yeah, I think that's most of what I wanted to cover. On to Russell. On to the long bit. Thank you, Julian. Do you want me to move aside? Turns out Russell has to share his screen. Oh, yes, I know. <laughs> All right. Um, so I hope I don't. This is not as long as last year. Uh, but it, it, some things will need explanation because they're a little unbelievable if I don't explain them. Uh, the auditor, the Two things that I guess matter is the auditor said we made a $3,000 loss this year 
and that uh, his report was unqualified. Um, possibly I should show you... Ah, oh, yes, of course you'd do that. You can read all that, but it basically says, um, I'm not qualifying this. This is, they were good people, and as far as I know, they gave us accurate figures. Which you should say, because I tried hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> you bugged enough people, anyway. Okay, so I'll first proceed to the last year showing you LA's expenditure. So what I mean by that is not the conferences. I've just summarised what we as the executive spent. Um, so our, with it just operating as the executive, we spent about uh, 38,000, you can see that split, I guess, there's a chunk in face-to-face -face and there's a huge chunk in insurance and the accounting costs consist of primarily the auditor's fees of 5,500, um, bank fees, yes, you can see it all there. I. I the only thing that directly relates to operation of the exec, I guess, is the 7,000 face-to-face. Um, that's what we cost you. Uh, we split out, I split out the LCA, uh, what I've called steering. You've heard um, Julian mention steering before. That's a term that's cropped up within the organisation to describe uh, subcommittees that look after conferences, and we have a few of them now, um, unofficially or officially. Uh, there's Drupal, there's WordPress, um, and there's PyCon. Um, Joomla Day tends to look after itself, as does Health Hack. Uh, it, it, we're trying to make them operate um, within their own budgetary confinements. We just... Uh, we take our 6% of the profit to pay for the insurance and bank fees and all the rest. Um, and the rest, uh, if they budget properly, they can use themselves. Um, and the qualification, if they can budget properly, is the incentive to, for them to plan ahead and actually think of what they want to spend it on their community. Uh, if they don't do that, uh, they don't get it. If they do do it, and they tell us in clear terms what they're going to spend it on so that we can predict their expenditure, and they feed nicely into my financial reports, they do get it. So that's... Uh... <coughs> uh, finally, we had an unexpected uh, expense this year of um, hardware upgrade. Um, our main servers started experiencing serious failures this year. Um, which brought the server replacement issue to a, a, a pleasing climax. Because um, we had been discussing it for many years and like all, uh, all volunteer organisations, all we'd managed to do was defer it. Um, so there was a long discussion about this and eventually we replaced the servers with you know, roughly the same amount of money we spent seven years ago, which obviously gets you something which is, you know, five, ten times the oomph in it. Um, there was a lot of discussion internally about whether we should use cloud services or not. Um, and I did some quick crunching of numbers and decided that if... Uh, they were both financially roughly the same over the period we're talking about. So it costs us, I guess, $3,000 just to run... LCA on Google's cloud services and the other conferences also have their own costs. Um, we have to run our web server which is currently costing us a thousand bucks a year or something or other from memory and so there's a whole pile of stuff we pay out uh, which can all go on the servers and that it sort of roughly equates to the hosting. Uh, given that the financial constraints were roughly the same outcome, it really, from my perspective, comes down to uh, what are the people prepared to do the work? What do they want? And they very much wanted their own metal, so that's what happened. 
Um, so part of that negotiation, um, they advised me that they were going to move to Proxmox, which is a VM management type arrangement, so we can spin up VMs for anyone who needs it within the community and give them an instance on LAs, just as you would get, well, not perhaps, that's possibly exaggeration, but a similar instance to what you get from Amazon or something else. So indeed, if you have a worthy thing you need to get spun up, it doesn't cost us anything to do this, right? This is, you need some metal, you want to put up a website, you, some other public service you want to put up, we can host it for you. Um, a second notable change, which Julian has already alluded to, is I called it the LCA steering committee up there and I split them out. That's because we're trying to separate all steering committees out. Um, not just uh, not just the other ones, the PyCon and all the rest, but in fact treat them all on an equal footing. At the moment, though, there's a, a noticeable schism, and that is that the LCA steering committee also happens to be the LA exec. Um, that will probably continue, but I want to split out the um, effects of... Um, doing things like bid review and ghosts and charging it so that it is clear that those fees come from running LCA. So we can put them against LCA and not force the other conferences to wear what is basically an LCA cost. Um, now, the, the final thing is uh, that is an outgrowth of something we've imaginally dubbed subcommittee policy V3, which is which is basically where we did formally split off. We've redeveloped our policies. We haven't actually published it yet, but I think we've done all the work. Um, we've just got to put in the web infrastructure to support it. Um, that does split off these committees formally um, so that they can run their stuff. The, the, the general philosophy is that after that 6K, we step back, providing they're financially reasonable and... Um, seem reason within the open source ethic, we probably won't have much to say um, about what they do with their own money. Um, okay, so we'll go to uh, this horrible big thing here, which cost me a lot of pain. Um, so this is the... Uh, I explained it last time. It was a year ago. Yeah, possibly you don't remember, so I'll go through it briefly again. So this this blue... No, no, it's deliberately... Uh, why is it doing that? Yeah, way more pixels on the projector. Yeah, all right. <laughs> How did it even do that? <laughs> Yay! Sorry, right, I didn't even look up at the screen. <laughs> okay. So the blue column there is the conferences. And uh, the breakups there on the left, those are just the ones the ex uh, auditor allocates to them. They're not my allocations or the ones... In <laughs> okay, uh, I'll pretend that it's not happening. Um, so the blue, the blue <laughs> column is the conferences and the things they there are not determined by us, they're determined by the auditor. Down the bottom here we have the, um, the profits they made. Um, and so since you'll all want to see that be beside the conference names, I'm sure, uh, I, here's a wee little vim I prepared earlier. 
Um, you can all see, now this is after the LA tax, this is after the 6% we take, right? So this is after any possible expense that could be considered to be theirs. And they all did very well, to be honest. Um, uh, LCA 19 did what could only be described as extraordinarily well. Um, so, does anyone want to look at that further? You all happy with it? Very good. So, this here, the yellow columns are the other things that have decided to operate, independent organisations that have decided to operate under our umbrella. IWS is a watering system for schools that didn't do much this year. Uh, love for complicated political reasons, um, did do something but didn't actually touch their bank account. And um, WordPress Australia, as you can see, did things. Uh, this is effectively their money that they gave us when they became a subcommittee. So it's, it's not, it is our money, but as far as I'm concerned, it's theirs, so it doesn't really figure in. And then you have the LA expenditure, which I summarised earlier. And then you have the closed column, which is conferences that were reported in the blue column and then proceeded to have a whole pile of invoices and other stuff coming in afterwards. And I'll mention them by name. It was a WordPress conference. <laughs> now, the total of those columns there is what I say we did over the year. Uh, and the difference is clearly I said we made a um, uh, $100,000 profit and the auditor made, said we made a $3,000 loss. And this is the thing that I'm saying that some of you may find difficult to swallow. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, you can choose which to believe, but I will point out that um, the auditor's figures can had a... LCA 2018 in it, which made a loss of some $12,000 and didn't have all of 2019 in it, or well, much of 2019, which made an $83,000 profit. Um, my figures moved those into this year. 2018, as far as I'm concerned, was finished with last year. Last year, I reported a $26,000 loss. That's out of the way. That's done. This year we had 2000 LCA 19, which made an $86,000 profit as opposed to a um, $12,000 loss. That is the major reason for that, that difference. So as far as I'm concerned, when you take the conferences that finished in the last financial year and you add up our operational expenses, that's the total. You can accept that or you can accept the auditor's version. Um, it... It does make life a little comfortable um, because we, um, when doing our grants now, we have decided that uh, we have accumulated enough of an insurance fund to cover uh, conferences that may fail. Um, and so we, we try to give away roughly that amount in grants, um, but which one do you believe, the $3,000 loss or the $100,000 profit? And I, I don't actually have a good answer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not helpful, right? But suffice it to say, if they ask the Treasurer, he will be a lot looser with the purse strings than last year when we made a... Well, I say we made a $30,000 loss. So um, if you have causes you want pursued, you'll probably find me saying yes, but I can't speak for the rest of the committee. Um, OK, I went through that. Uh, or I, I, I don't know... I don't know whether I need to go through this rant, but I'd at least to need to say that I screwed up. <laughs> um, <laughs> I said last year, those yellow columns um, where I did the comparison, that previous years would, uh, sorry, future years would move into previous years, and it clearly didn't. Um, I'll give you the main reason for that, um, and that is that LCA 2019 was held in New Zealand. So uh, what happens is the auditor comes along and runs a profit and loss for last year and gets a figure. That's a wonderful figure. But there's an enormous... We have an, uh, a large number of NZ assets which are valued in NZ dollars. 
And then a little while later, after we've signed all the reports and God knows what else, I don't know how much longer later, he says, I'm done. And then I have to report the figures in zero and create that conference thing, which he doesn't give us. He just gives us basically the total. So I run the same report. Now, you know, computers, you give them the same data in and you get the same data out. Well, it was uh, $4,000 different. <laughs> and uh, when I... Uh, I got yelled at by a couple of girls about this. And... <laughs> and because it took me a long while to figure out why. Uh, but the reason was, of course, the NZ exchange rate had varied between when we ran the two reports. And in fact, if you run them four hours apart, you get two different answers on supposedly the same numbers. So um, it, it made my life entertaining for a while. <laughs> um, finally, I'll just note in what's coming up next year, we'll hopefully finish off subcommittee V3 and actually get it rolled out and on our website. And if the constitutional change succeeds, I will uh, uh, redo our application to become a charity. Now, um, there's some confusion about this, about what it will achieve. It does not create, make us tax deductible. That's uh, a different status, which I forgot what it's called, DGR or something or other. Um, it's simply a government blessing that we think you're a good, you do good works, as opposed to, uh, for, well, I shouldn't say that, because good for-profit organisations also do good works, but we work entirely voluntarily and give our efforts back to the community, I think, is, is what they're recognising. Um, the only difference that makes is some companies use that as a proxy for that statement. So rather than say, listen, Linux Australia, can you give us a, tw you know, a page on what you do and tell us why you're good and all the rest, they can just say, hey, look, the government says you're not-for-profit. Therefore, you know, they're a charity. They're, we should give them money. And that makes the political discussion in the company when they give us sponsorship just a bit easier to push. And that's the reason we're doing it. It's the only reason we're doing it. Uh, it's not to get tax deductibility. Um, and with that, I'm finished. Thank you. So, is there any questions for myself, Russell, or Julian? Donna. Um, I don't know if we're covering the, or the constitutional change. Uh, it will on the other agenda items. So, the next bit. Okay. Any other questions? Kathy? Uh, it was a question for the Treasurer, approximately how much money does Linux Australia have in the bank and the answer is 800000 Um We are thinking of diversifying that somewhat, so in the bank maybe you have a slightly different definition, but uh, in terms of liquid assets, about 800000 yeah. uh, The idea is we keep two conferences in reserve in case two conferences fail consecutively and we'll still continue to do our good work. Russell? Uh, given the last LCA month made a big surplus, would this year's balance basket, would the new council consider reducing the delegate fees if this year's too much? Um, well, that's a good question. You see, we don't determine the fees. We ask the LCA committee to determine the fees. As it happens, I'm also the treasurer of this LCA. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if we came in to the surprise of everyone and um, about $60,000 in over budget this year on sponsorship, if we hadn't have had that level of unanticipated sponsorship, we would have made a loss. So... It becomes difficult. Do we reduce the fees under the expectation that we're going to get over budget sponsorship? I, I, I can't give you the answer, right? I, I, I think um, it wasn't... It, I know we stand up here like, um, like a, some sort of elite as though we make these decisions, but in actual fact, every decision is a fight. 
Uh, and there is always just as many discussions as you lot have out here in the committee itself about what we should do. And there's a simple number of, um, similar number of discussions. And in fact, what we had is a non-discussion. We said, we'll just charge what they charged last year. That makes it real easy, and that was the end of the discussion. There's sort of a further add to that, which is a whole heap of the why is LCA always in January? Why does LCA do this? Why does um, mini comps? This is a recent discussion. There is a boff scheduled sometime this week. Please attend. A lot of those are not as set in stone as people would like to think, but I, we admit that teams need to actually ask the question. Um, we are not against changing some of the sacred elements, um, but it's a discussion that would need to happen. Um, yes, if we keep defaults, we will keep having mini comps. We will keep having LCA in January. Any other questions? No? All right. So I'd like to move a motion that the auditor's report is a true statement of the financial accounts. Seconded by Hugh. Sorry, he beat you, Josh. <laughs> All in favour? Any against? Any abstentions? Two. Awesome. I'll take that as carried. Uh, motion that the President's report... I've got a microphone here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't move my own motion. Um, can someone please move the motion that the President's report is correct? I'd like to move a motion that the President's report is correct. <laughs> Andrew's actually beaten you to it. Sorry. <laughs> Can I have a seconder though, Kathy? Quick! Oh, awesome. Kathy? <laughs> All those in favour? Any against? Any abstentions? Awesome. Carried. Uh, Secretary's report. Can I please get a motion to accept that? Miles? Seconded? Josh? All those in favour? <laughs> Any against? Abstentions? No? Nope. Awesome. And finally, the Treasurer's report. Um, anyone would like to move that motion? Joel. Seconded? Paul. And all those in favour? Any against? Abstentions? Two. Uh, Carried, anyway. Uh, Paul. Um, motion by someone that the actions of the Council of 2019 are endorsed by the membership. Feel free to not. No. Uh, Josh Stewart, thank you. Seconder? Uh, I'll choose Steve. Um, any, uh, all in favour? Yeah, any against? Any abstentions? Yeah. <laughs> I think we did an awesome job, so whatever. <laughs> anyway, now to other agenda items. Kathy, I might need to borrow your laptop for this, because... Um, we're going to be talking about the amendments to the Constitution. The Council recommends the change of the Constitution in the following areas. It was all in GitHub. Um, and Russell is moving the motion that the Treasurer accepts the addition... Oh, well, we have to look at the results first. Can't jump the gun. Uh, we probably want the returning officer. Oh, yes, returning officer. No, because that's not until the new council. We're doing the... Uh, We're doing the, the constitutional. constitutional. Not the 11th. Sorry, I didn't get to the side. No, no. <coughs> yeah, do you want to come up to the table? Okay, slight delay. Mm -hmm. Which should be up now, yeah, as resolved. The council election ones are. The oh. The constitutional change ones are an hour oh. out. Crap. <laughs> Can we forward time? <laughs> uh, with your permission, I'll rerun the chronicle. All right. Um, <coughs> we'll do the council elections first, if that works. Um, what I will do is I'll see if I can bring it up on Russell's laptop. Technicalities. <laughs> this is difficult. Where's 
We really need to get rid of time zones. That's all I can say, people. Um, I'd like to bring Jonathan Oxler up, who has been wonderful and accepted to be our returning officer. Um, I've got a mic. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so my name's Jonathan. I'm the returning officer this year. And um, just prior to this AGM, I scrutineered the election results with the assistance of Cathy. The election was conducted using a module within CIVI CRM. And the source code of the election module, which does all of the calculations, is open source. So if anybody did feel the urge to uh, review the code that was used to conduct the election, it's all available. The, um, the election is now complete, so we will reveal the results. <laughs> Just bringing a backup laptop. In a surprise to no one. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Sarah. Thank you. As president. Uh, can we scroll? Oh, okay, we can't see on there what's on here. Okay, so we have Jonathan as vice president. <laughs> Julian as secretary. <laughs> Russell as treasurer. Lisa, Joel, and Benno as OCMs. Okay, so we have our new um, committee. Do we need a motion or to accept the election results? I believe no, that's, that's, it. that's it. That's no? it. Okay. Thank you. I will hand the microphone back. Thanks for that. I do know that Kathy needs to run a cron job. everybody's awareness, what's happened with the constitutional change election is that the results are scheduled to be generated at 8pm Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time <laughs> in about 20 minutes time. So what I'm going to have to do to get the election results is do some background foo and rerun the cron job We're going um, <laughs> to, to, to regenerate the election results in the future. So bear with me a few moments. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Donna. Yes, she can ask you a constitutional question. Russell might need the microphone. Do you need one? Oh, yours is there. Yes. Um, I've got, I've got um, I was away, yes. Um, it's, it will be interesting for us to see what we do in the future. Um, I'd like to say that we would be advocating for others to be fighting our fights for us. That's probably the best way to put it. Um, we are here to support our conference, um, not necessarily to be looking after our members, despite what I said in, <laughs> in my talk. Um, but... I hope that others would be able to fight the fight for us if need be, but yeah, it's difficult. Just from, since I, I... It is now 22, which is when we said the meeting was going to start. Thank you all for coming back, and apologies for yesterday's little screw-up. Um, thank you to Cathy and Jonathan Oxer last night for working very hard to get these numbers for us, because it turns out it was a little bit more difficult than we thought. But... Um, Kathy is actually working on a talk at the moment, so I can't be here to go through it, but she's written some pretty detailed notes and we're going to show it to you so you can see exactly what Kathy has said. So, without further ado, Russell will try and get his laptop working. 
A lot more further ado. So, TLDR, there were 206 votes in total. And as you can see, sadly, we did not hit the 75% that we needed. So, the motion has not passed. Um, if anyone's interested, would anyone be interested in reading the notes? Yeah? So, let me know when you want to scroll. I'm not going to read it out because... Sorry? Yes. Do you want me to move down? So they're pretty detailed notes, which is quite lovely. And again, thank you to Kathy and John Oxer for doing this. Scroll, 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 and that's it. So, there's not much else we can say. We can actually just close the meeting now, but we needed to show that to you, that the motion did not pass. Um, we will... I'll get to questions in a sec. Um, we will try again, but we'll probably have a bit more of a, a lead-up to this and full information, and I will like to know why people have said no so that we can actually address those issues um, or questions that anyone might have. Um, I think Alexa went first for questions, so Alexa? Yep. Oh, that's a, that's a separate issue. Um, around grants. Um, so grants will uh, keep going and we'll have an amount to make available. We haven't actually been able to sit down and do that yet, but we will provide full instructions. Katie? Yes, definitely. So we will actually be providing this to the mailing list. Um, and a uh, question as to why um, people have said no, and then they can just contact us directly with those reasons if they're not comfortable with doing it on list. Any other questions? Yes? Yes. Um, I don't want to actually detract from that conversation. So there's a lot of conversation that needs to be had about LCA and I'd rather focus on that rather than LA itself. But um, there may be an opportunity this week, depending on how busy we all are, to have a chat about this. Um, but if in doubt, just bug him. <laughs> yes, James. Yes, James. I, I don't want to put people on that spot. No, I'm, just, I'm just interested in whether people are interested in expressing that view to the new committee. If they're not willing, that's fine. Anyone willing? No? Okay. Um, I would like to call this meeting closed at uh, 12.45. Thank you all for coming to part two of this AGM and thank you all for voting if you did or didn't. Um, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you. And if anyone hasn't signed an attendance sheet for today, can you come and sign it before you leave? Thanks.